Hey, what's going on guys? Mark here with Car Audio Fabrication. And today I'm kind of nervous because we're gonna be putting the finishing touches on the Jeep Build Amplifier Rack Beauty Panel. That's right, if you guys have been following along, you know that I've made this custom fabricated beauty panel. We have edge lit acrylic, we have some formed mesh grills that we did, we have a laser etched sponsor panel here, and today, we're gonna be finishing it up by wrapping it with this nice black vinyl. So without further ado, let's jump in and start applying some upholstery adhesive. We'll talk about some tips for wrapping things because I'm a little nervous because I know this is gonna be quite the challenge. First things first, we gotta protect the table. Now before I start applying the adhesive, I need to remove my metal mesh and the acrylic. If you guys wanna see how I made the metal mesh and acrylic, be sure to check out my previous videos. Now if you haven't seen my previous videos about how I did the LEDs, what I did is I actually made this ring that has the LEDs mounted to them. This is completely detachable as well. That way I can service the LEDs if I need to. So now that I have all that removed, all that's left is the actual wooden part itself. One of the key things before you do any sort of upholstery is you wanna make sure that you prep. So in my case, this won't be too complicated. I know that these areas here, these tabs that actually hold this piece in the vehicle, I know that I don't wanna put vinyl on those, so I'm gonna prep them by protecting them with tape. So again, for me, the prep for what I wanted to protect with the tape was actually pretty simple. Uh, if you were doing a little bit different panel where you had other areas that were already painted or were already upholstered, you would want to make sure that you do something similar with protecting it with the tape. So now let's move this out of the way for a second and roll out some of our vinyl. Now the reason I'm doing this is I just wanna get a rough size estimate here before I cut it. That way we don't cut more than what we need. And it won't quite fit that way. Now you wanna make sure that wherever you lay it before you cut it, you wanna make sure that you have enough extra material to wrap around the edges. So a good way to do that is just to fold it like so, just to make sure. And now I'm gonna cut over here. Now I'm gonna move this out of the way once again. It's always a good idea to just double check your vinyl before you start this. Make sure that there's no scratches or anything on it. There's a little bit of dust, but it would be the worst thing ever to upholster a full panel and then you flip it over and realize that your vinyl is messed up. I'm going to start with applying upholstery adhesive around the perimeter and around the insides of these holes to the material. That way I know what I need to fill in and I don't overuse upholstery adhesive. Now, if you guys have watched any of my upholstery videos before, you probably know what I'm about to say, but the biggest tip I have for you guys, the biggest tip ever, don't use that spray aerosol stuff that you can get at the hardware store. It actually works pretty good for carpet, but when it comes to doing vinyl like this, especially when you have complex curves and areas that you really need the upholstery vinyl to stick to, it doesn't work. You have to get something high quality. I like using this stuff right here. I'll link this down in the video description. This stuff does give off quite a smell, so I'm gonna be putting on my mask. And just so you guys know, you can actually spray this through a spray gun. I've shown you guys a good spray gun to use for that in a previous video, but since I don't do upholstery that often, I find that it's easier for me to just brush it on. A tip for you guys about these respirator masks, and again, I'll link it down below for you guys, but make sure you store it in a bag. That's for two reasons. One, it makes the filters last much, much longer. And secondly, you don't have to worry about spiders. You guys think I'm joking, but there's been times that I've seen spiders get into people's masks, especially when they don't keep it in the bag. I don't know if you guys knew this, but when you put this on, there's a good way to check to make sure that you have a good seal. You put it on and then you put your hand in front of this part right here and you try to blow out and this is the valve that normally lets the air out, but if you're covering it, you can tell if you have a good seal if no air leaks around your mouth. We're good.
So I've got the vinyl completely covered now and you'll be able to touch this and it's not gonna stick to your hand once it's dry because this is a contact adhesive, meaning it sticks to itself. So I also got the beauty panel covered. So I'm gonna let this dry. And again, I can't stress enough that you want to let it dry. Don't try wrapping it when the material is still wet. You'll just end up with issues. It's actually a little bit better to wrap it once it's dry because then the two surfaces can kind of touch each other and they'll stick, but they won't quite lock until you apply pressure and then it will lock into place. So I've given this plenty of time to dry. The way to know that you're good to go is it will be kind of glossy, but like I said before, when you touch it, it doesn't stick to your fingers. Now you do have to be careful with MDF, especially on the end grain. The adhesive will really like to soak into the wood, so you might want to do another coat. I've already done that, so we should be good to go to start wrapping. I'm gonna put my mask on, so I'm not gonna really be able to talk through this part, but there's a couple things I wanna point out. Now, if you wanna make it so that certain areas don't stick right away, you can lay on some wax paper, so I might do that. Before I start sticking everything on, I'm going to push the material kind of into these holes. In other words, I'm not just gonna lay it flat and then try to mold it in. I'm gonna give myself a little bit of extra material to work with right from the get-go. Also, if you did put any protective tape on, now is the time to take it off because the tape will have a little bit of adhesive on it and we don't want the tape kind of sandwiched in there. So we might as well pull it off now. Quick side note, I've been listening to a lot of electronic music lately, Skrillex, uh, Martin Garrix. When I'm out in the garage, I really like to just blast this music and enjoy having fun fabricating. I'm curious, what do you guys like to listen to when you're out in the shop? What's some good music that I should check out? So I'm gonna flip everything over now and I'll may have to make some relief cuts, but then I can start working this part into these sides. actually got ahead of myself a little bit. I need to apply some adhesive around this part here on the back side. So I ran into a major issue. Great, let me show you guys. So here's the problem. This is so deep, this draw on the vinyl, it's just this particular vinyl that I wanted to use, it's just impossible to stretch it enough without screwing up the grain in the vinyl by heating it up. You can see here I've heated it up, but the grain is almost gone. And I don't really want to have that. And I kind of got this one to look good, but there's still stretch marks in the corners. I'd rather just do it so that it's perfect, make it look good. So here's what I'm going to do. And maybe it's actually a good thing. One of the things I was actually concerned about with this Amprac beauty panel is the fact that if everything was the same color vinyl, I didn't know if it would really have that great of a transition look. So what I'm actually, what I've already started doing is I used this ridge here and I made a really careful, precise cut. And I'm actually gonna pull away this vinyl that's on the inside here. And I'm gonna wrap the inside with a four-way stretch vinyl that's also black, but it has a little bit different grain. But in the meantime, I can keep this part of the vinyl that I've already wrapped. So I just need to peel this away while it's still a little bit moist. <sighs> These kind of things happen during a project, but this is good. This is a good learning experience. And I kind of want to get your opinion on something. So here's where we're at. I've got the full perimeter all wrapped. I'm actually really happy with the way the perimeter looks. I did put it in the vehicle. It looks really good in the vehicle as well. But I'm trying to figure out what I want to do on the inside here. And I thought I had enough four-way stretch vinyl, but of course I don't. So I'm gonna have to order a little bit more. But this is the grain on this. So you can see, there's a slightly different grain, but sometimes when you have two different grains, it can look kind of cool. This grain does match what's in the vehicle. So what I'm thinking is using this four-way stretch vinyl on the inside here because it's much more stretchy. I know that I can get this into the corners like I need to. What I'm also thinking is when I cut that, 
it will probably look pretty good, but I'm not sure that it'll be perfect. If you get close, you might be able to see the cut transition. So what I'm thinking about doing is having a trim ring around the outside here. It is kind of skinny here, so it'd be a really thin trim ring. And I might just do thin here and then maybe make it bigger. But inside the vehicle, there's some different accents that are painted silver. So I'm thinking it would be cool to maybe paint it silver. That way it transitions more to the front of the vehicle. I'd really like to know what you guys think, so post a comment down below. So obviously this upholstery part of the project is gonna be a two video series. If you are new here, make sure that you subscribe so that you can be updated when I upload future videos. Also, if you'd like to check out this full build playlist, you can do so here on screen. Thank you for watching this video and a special thanks goes out to Brian, Ali, EJ, Emmanuel, Rory, Truman, and Jerry, along with the rest of the Patreon support team. Thank you guys for helping support the making of this content.